Good morning. The entrance hymn is number 723, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. <laughs> Watchers and ye holy ones, bright seraphs, cherubim and thrones, raise the blood strain. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Welcome. Today, the church celebrates the festivity of the Divine Mercy, second Sunday of Easter. And so, coming together, to celebrate the mystery of our salvation, we pause for a moment to remember our sins, to ask God for pardon and strength, so that we may prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever bring <clears throat> all the angels and saints to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ. Christ.
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal feast kindled the faith of the people you had made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to the need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His
His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we may keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world and the victory that conquers the world is our faith, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he shoved in his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he has said this, 
he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with him, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark or the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believed. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Had you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through his belief you might have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the things that I love when I come into the Assumption Parish here in Peekskill is that no matter at what time of the day, I say this because as a priest, I am requested sometimes to come in the, in the middle of the week, uh, in the afternoon or in the morning for one reason or another, and the church is always open. It is always available for any one of us who might want to come to do a particular prayer, to sit and just be quiet, to enjoy the beautiful um, art religious that we have surrounding us in this beautiful house of God, or to meditate or to pray. Um, it is a sign of welcoming, of course. It is a sign that this place belongs to everyone. And everyone, even if they don't even if they have not been registered at the rectory, they are welcome, everyone. The church, of course, is not the building. We are the church of God. The members of the church, the baptized and those who are in preparation to be followers of Christ, are the church of God here on earth. We call it the mystical body of Christ, Christ being the head of the of that body, of that spiritual body. Well, today in the gospel, we see a different church, a church that it was close in. Naturally, they were so because they were afraid. They had just experienced the worst type of trauma, shock, having seen their beloved teacher, their guide, our Lord Jesus Christ being put to death in the worst human possible. All kinds of lies, insults, defamation, things were said about him, and he was condemned even though he was fully innocent of all those charges. And so they are afraid because they don't know what to do, except that they are coming as a group as a community, as the church, together. Perhaps to process some of the uh, emotions, some of those uh, different th uh, things that they experience, don't know what to do. Now that their teacher is gone, sorry speaking, but they are locked in, afraid that perhaps the same fate will happen to them. And that was a real 
concern. That's why the church for the first few years lived in the catacombs in secret. And it is in the midst of this fear and of this uh, our church locked in that Jesus Christ comes into their midst. No knocking, hoping that somebody will open the door, but rather he's just right there. Because he knew that, that he, they needed to reconsider everything and to understand that they cannot be the community of Christ locked in, into just themselves. That is not what the church is all about. The church exists, as I mentioned in another occasions, because of its mission to go out into the world, to go out and to share with everyone we live with and we encounter God's love given to us in the fullness in Jesus Christ. It is because of that reason that we are church, and that reason alone. Everything else is just a commentary on that sense of responsibility, communally and individually. And so the Lord comes into their midst and wants to open the disciples' hearts, minds, and their wills to this teaching, to this understanding of who they are as disciples of the Lord. And he not only comes into their midst, but he shows them his wounds. Like the ones depicted in the beautiful icon of Christ of the divine mercy, right there. From which his love, his peace, his grace emanates for anyone who wants to receive it. And what a wonderful gift that is, because as we read this beautiful passage from today's gospel, we see that the Lord doesn't come to scold them because they betray him at the foot of the cross on Good Friday. He doesn't come to tell them, why were you there defending me? Nothing like that. But rather, he comes to let them know that he understands us. And that at times, the human person acts out of his own self-interest and stay back. Even when things are so uh, clear that we are to do something about they just stand back and let things take place as if they have no relation to what is going on. He doesn't tell them anything, but rather, I love you. No matter what happened at the foot of the cross on Good Friday, I have nothing against each one of you, but rather only loved. And that's my message to all of you and from you to the world. So therefore, stop being afraid. Stop being fearful and locked in and leaving other people out. Not at all. That's not my church. That is not the church. That is not the community I want of my believers. All the opposite. I want a community of believers that is welcoming and receptive of anyone so that through that community, through that faithful uh, fellowship of all of you being together in my name, they may also discover the graces I am giving you. Amongst them, my peace. Peace I give you. My peace I give leave you. A peace not like the world offers, but rather a peace that brings us into communion with the living God from where we emanate, from where we have come from. And you, Thomas, you who 
are still doubtful. Here, touch me. Feel my grace. Feel myself. I came so that you may have life. And the only way to have life is if you receive me and you have me with you. And what a transformation that moment reveals to us. Thomas makes one of the most profound faith declarations in the Gospels. My God and my Lord. I'm sorry, I had doubt. I had doubt your resurrection. No more. And tradition has said that he went all the way to India proclaiming the resurrection of the Lord. All the way down to Goa at the tip of the great peninsula. And the other disciples, the other apostles too. Some went to Espanola, some went to Great Britain, which is now uh, England, and many other places, because they understood on that particular occasion when the Lord came into their midst, that indeed they were to follow Christ, knowing fear, no in doubt, although it's human to have those doubts, but in faith. It is only when we open our minds and our hearts to the presence of God in Christ our Lord that indeed we come to understand God's full revelation that we have been meant for the glory of God, to live in his kingdom where peace is one of the main signs of God's presence. What a beautiful gift that is. And so Easter is a time for us to reconsider how is our heart opened or closed when it comes to the things of God. I hope that it's always opened and with it is not, then to ask the Lord to open it for us so that indeed we might continue God's wonderful mission, the same that the Lord came to fulfill in, in his Father's name. Go to the ends of the earth and tell them about God's love. In the name of the uh, Trinity God, who made us, who saved us, who sanctified us. Let us profess our faith. I believed in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten no may, come substantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us many women and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Brothers and sisters, we have no sin, but still believed. And so now with confidence in faith, let us bring before our God our petitions and concerns today. That the newly baptized and newly received find in the church both welcome and challenge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations rich and poor work together to share the world's resources fairly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those seeking an increase in faith will grow in certainty that God's divine mercy is abundant beyond human imagination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this community strive to be of one heart and one mind in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of the God of comfort to encompass those whose lives are torn apart by violence and death in Israel and Palestine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, Norman Smith, <clears throat> Michelle Salico, Teresa Timmons, John Danko, and those listed in the bulletin, that the Lord will restore them to health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the peace of Christ, Joan Cassidy, Felix Rivera, Rose Pamiato, Juan Bettino Carpia, Narciso Moracho, and especially for Constance Stanza Clemente, that they may be welcomed into the company of the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, generous God, plant your precious gift of faith ever deeper in our hearts. All we ask, we ask all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 180. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. joyful valleys ring with hosannas in the highest to our Savior and our King. Alleluia, alleluia, like the sun from out the wave. He has risen up in triumph from the darkness of the grave. He's the splendor of the nations. He's the lamp of endless day. He's the very Lord of glory who is risen up today. Alleluia, alleluia, blessed Jesus, make us rise from the life of this corruption to the life that never dies. May your glory be our when the days of time are past and the dead shall be awakened by the trumpet's mighty blast.
Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept this sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands, hands for the praise, the praise and the glory of God's his name, name for, for our good and the, the good of all his God's holy church. church. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, it, the oblations of your people, that renew it by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all to love you yet more gloriously now, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our lives. Therefore, overcome with past wild joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man and women in your own image, and entrusted the whole world to their care, so that, so that in serving you alone, their creator, they might have dominion over all creatures, and when through disobedience they lost your friendship, you did not abandon them to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek may find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as a first fruit for those who believed, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these sufferings, that they might become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, 
Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, and while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your gentle Lord and profess your resurrection until you come upon the Therefore, O oh Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead, we proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they might truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now, we pray all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, religious catechists, deacons, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Especially we pray at this Mass for Constancio Clemente. And to all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you to Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor, Saviors, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our thanks, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lived and reigned forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Behold, brothers and sisters, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed, happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my, and my soul shall, shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 177, The Day of Resurrection. Savior 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Pasqual Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements this week. Today, the church celebrates Divine Mercy Sunday. So at 3 p.m. in our Adoration Chapel, we'll be praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet in front of the Blessed Sacrament. If you're able to come out this afternoon at 3 p.m. to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet, you're all welcome to come out. This coming Friday, April 12th, the Monsignor Francis J. Ansborough Columbiettes will be hosting a fundraiser, a night at the races. This will be held at the American Legion Hall at 936 McKinley Street. The doors will open at 6 p.m. Refreshments will be served at 6.30 p.m. It's $10 at the door. In the bulletin, you're gonna see a little, uh, a little blurb about the night at the races, though. So if you're able to come out to help to support the Columbiettes and all the charitable work that they do for our parish and for our community. And finally, on Friday, April 26, we will be having a wine tasting event. This will be held at the Elks Lodge right here on Brown Street. In the bulletin this week, you're gonna see this flyer. This flyer is double-sided. One side is in English, the other side is in Spanish. It's gonna be on, it will be at 7 p.m., $40 per person. The next two weekends, you will see members of the entertainment committee in the vestibule of the church. They will be selling the tickets for this event. Please note that no tickets will be sold at the door of this event. So you have the next two weekends, full information in this flyer. So if you can please take the bulletin home and this flyer home to share it with your family and friends and invite them to the, the, to the wine tasting event. Father Roberto, welcome back to Assumption Church. It's a pleasure to have you here and thank you so much for celebrating our mass here this morning. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend yes. us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And, and do, do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust, thrust into hell, hell Satan, Satan and, and all, all other evil spirits, spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The recessional hymn is number 170, Hallelujah is our song. What hope we have, even in the longest night, for the light will overcome. We will not fear, for we know the sun will rise. Hallelujah is our song. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is risen over all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah is our song. What peace we have, even in this wounded world, where the battle rages on, we will not fear. For we know who hears our souls. Hallelujah is our song. Hallelujah. 